Good afternoon, colleagues. The next item of business is portfolio questions, and the portfolio this afternoon is education and skills. Um, I can remind members that questions one and two are grouped together, and that I'll take any supplementaries at the end of those questions. And if a member wishes to ask a supplementary, um, they should press the request to speak button to place an R in the chat function during the relevant question. And I call question number one, Annabel Ewing. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on measures to close the educational attainment gap in schools in the Cowdenbeath constituency. Cabinet Secretary. We are absolutely committed to substantially eliminating the poverty-related attainment gap by 2026 and are investing an increased £1 billion in the Scottish Attainment Challenge over the course of this parliamentary term to do that. Schools in Fife are receiving over £10.4 million in pupil equity funding in 2022-23, with allocations confirmed over four years, whilst Fife Council will also receive another £8.5 million strategic equity funding over four years. These long-term commitments will support head teachers and local authorities to develop their short and longer-term plans to close the poverty-related attainment gap. Additionally, Fife Council is receiving almost 700,000 in care experience, children and young people's funding in 2022-23. Annabelle Ewing. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer and welcome the very significant investment that the Scottish Government is making in tackling the poverty-related educational gap. I wonder if she could, in fact, provide further information about pupil equity funding uh, that will be available in my uh, Cowdenbeath constituency schools, if it's possible to have that uh, level of breakdown of information. And it would also be helpful if the Cabinet Secretary could indicate what assessment has in fact been made as to the significant role that this funding can play in closing the attainment gap such that every pupil enjoys the same life chances wherever they live. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I can advise Annabel Yoon that schools in Fife, um, including in um, her Cowdenbeath constituency, have had their PEF allocations confirmed for the four years. This means that schools throughout Fife will receive almost £42 million over the next four years, helping support schools and head teachers who know their pupils best to invest in approaches to improve children's literacy, numeracy and health and wellbeing. A new Education Scotland PEF resource has been published to support school leaders as they further develop their approaches to PEF. The sharing of effective practice, including how some schools in Fife have invested their PEF, helps staff to reflect and build on the practice to help ensure every young person in Scotland has an equal chance of success, including, very importantly, the members, children and young people in Cowdenbeath constituency. Question number two, Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what work has been done to close the attainment gap. Cabinet Secretary. The impact of the pandemic and the current cost of living crisis means accelerating progress to substantially eliminate the poverty-related attainment gap is as important as ever. That is why we are investing £1 billion this parliamentary term, up from last term's £750 million. This includes the distribution of more than £520 million in pupil equity funding over uh, of over £174 million to all 32 local authorities over the next four years, enabling them to make longer-term plans. Additionally, we provide local authorities with targeted funding for care experienced children and young people. Finally, we have introduced a requirement for local authorities to set ambitious local stretch aims by the 30th of September to accelerate progress in closing the poverty-related attainment gap. Alexander Stewart. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the answer. The statistics show that the attainment gap for pupils achieving A to C at National 5 and higher has widened in the last year, with the gap at higher level nearly double the 2021 figure. Given that gap is getting wider, has the Scottish Government failed to tackle its supposed defining mission? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I would urge caution in comparisons um, from the 22 and 21 um, results because, as members will know, there was an entirely different way that uh, young people were assessed because of the pandemic. But we have seen progress and positive signs in tackling the poverty-related attainment gap. So, for example, since 2009-10, the SCQF Level 5 or better, the proportion of school leavers attaining one pass or more has actually increased by 19.5 percentage points for the most deprived areas. That shows that progress has been made, but we are aware that there is much more to do. That's exactly why we have been increasing investment in this area. 
Number of supplementaries. First, Michael Mara. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary has already cut vital attainment funding for the poorest communities in Scotland, but we do know there is another £43 million of cuts coming to the education portfolio. Can the Cabinet Secretary guarantee to the Chamber today that attainment funding will not be cut as part of that process, and especially for the poorest communities which have suffered the brunt of the cuts that she has most recently made? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as the member is well aware, the um, investment that is going in from the Scottish Attainment Challenge Funding, and particularly those that is now going to the 32 local authorities, is a recognition of the fact that there is poverty um, in all parts of Scotland and the impact of the pandemic is throughout Scotland. And it is very important that we recognise that and ensure that the local authorities um, right across Scotland have the funds available to be able to assist children and young people in this time. Colette Stevenson. Cabinet Secretary, we know that poverty is what drives the attainment gap. I welcome steps being taken by the Scottish Government that I hope will narrow the gap, like the game-changing Scottish Child Payment and the £1 billion investment over the lifetime of this Parliament through the Scottish Attainment Challenge. We need to see meaningful action coming from the UK Government. Ahead of the fiscal event tomorrow, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the Tories should take the opportunity to end child poverty rather than deliver tax cuts for the rich? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I thank the member for that very important question because uh, we can do everything that we can within education and certainly our um, teachers and our local authorities are doing everything that they can to tackle the poverty-related attainment gap. But the best way to tackle it is to actually tackle poverty itself. That's exactly why we are investing, for example, in the Scottish Child Payment. But the member is quite right to point out to the fact that if you look at the Westminster welfare reforms, uh, they have severely impacted on families right across uh, Scotland. And if you look at, for example, the two-child limit, the removal of the £20 uplift to universal credit, the benefit freeze, amongst others, if those were to be reversed, that would put £780 million into the pockets of Scottish households and lift 70,000 people, including 30,000 children, out of poverty next year. So we will do all we can, and we are determined to do so. It's unfortunate the UK Government seems intent in prioritising bankers' bonuses rather than children. Stephen Kerr. Back to education, because when I was, um, when I was uh, in the Education Committee, the Cabinet Secretary promised the committee that she would publish a statement of the expected outcomes and a plan for the £1 billion that's being spent over this Parliament. When will her statement, her plan, with, uh, with these outcomes, detailed with the plan, when will it be published so that we can review this at a further meeting of the Education Committee, which I'm looking forward to rejoining. Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I welcome Stephen Kerr uh, to his uh, role as education spokesperson from the Scottish Conservatives? Can I gently say that education is impacted by many things? It is impacted by poverty. It is impacted by his Tory government down in Westminster. And if he doesn't see that, that is a disservice to the time he will spend on the Education Committee. If he was listening to my answer to Alexander Stewart earlier on, presiding officer, he would have uh, heard that the local authorities are set to give their local stretch aims to the Scottish Government by the 30th of September. Following uh, the analysis of that, the Scottish Government will publish that, um, and I look forward to appearing before the Education Committee, should they wish me to do so, and taking further questions from Stephen Kerr at that point. And finally, Willie Rennie. I'm intrigued by the, the very careful language of the Education Secretary. She now says she's going to substantially eliminate the poverty-related attainment gap. I've checked the SNP website. It's very clear it wants to close the poverty-related attainment gap. Now, the Education Secretary was effectively pulled up by the First Minister before when she tried to slip away from the 2026 target for closing the poverty-related attainment gap. Is this another attempt to try and get round this very important target to help young people from our deprived communities. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I quote from the 2016-17 programme for government where it is said that the defining mission of this government is to close the poverty-related attainment gap. We intend to make significant progress within the lifetime of this parliament and substantially eliminate the gap over the course of the next decade. That's exactly what my answers refer to and that's exactly what the policy of this government remains. Question number three uh, is not lodged. Question four, Co-Cab Stewart. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'd like to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the progress of its student accommodation strategy. Minister Jamie Hepburn. The Scottish Government is committed to delivering a student accommodation strategy for Scotland, which will, in part, be informed by a review of purpose-built student accommodation. The review will look at a number of issues, including supply and affordability. The PBSA review research report has now been received and will be considered by a review group with recommendations being submitted to ministers later this year. I thank the Minister for his answer. He will be aware that a number of institutions, including the University of Glasgow in my Glasgow Kelvin constituency, find themselves unable to guarantee accommodation for their students this academic year, and that this is a source of concern and anxiety for students and their families. Will he um, undertake to continue to work with uh, institutions on the complex supply issues that they are facing to ensure that next year's intake uh, does not face the same difficulties in securing appropriate accommodation. Minister. Yes, I, I can give uh, that commitment. I'm aware of the challenges that uh, some students uh, going to University of Glasgow have encountered in uh, attending uh, the university uh, there. I, I should say it's my understanding that all first-year undergraduates who applied for accommodation by the deadline that had been set by the university who do not live within an hour's commute have now been offered accommodation. I know there are others who have not been able to thus far and the university continues to work with them. As I have laid out, of course, we have a commitment to our student accommodation strategy for Scotland and COCAB Stuart and other members can be assured that we will work with Scotland's universities and others with an interest in that to take that forward. Again, a number of supplementaries, starting with Sandesh Gohan. Thank you. I have been contacted by multiple constituents saying that they have been advised by Glasgow University to suspend or withdraw from their courses because, as they put it, Glasgow is full due to a significant contraction in the private rental market. And the phrase of Allender Institute warns this will get worse following the announcement of rent control. And further to Cocab Stewart's question about next year, my question is what will the Minister do to help students now? Minister. Well, it's interesting to see the, the Tory mask slips in terms of their opposition to rent control, but turning to the specific, uh, the specific uh, point of them. Well, that's, that's what I heard from Mr Gulhani very, very clearly. I'm aware of the issues. We've made commitments to uh, work towards a student accommodation strategy. That's exactly what we'll do. He can be assured that we'll continue to work with universities and with uh, others on uh, this matter. And if Mr Gulhani wants to make uh, contact with me directly about any specific concerns, I'll of course be happy to respond. And Martin Whitfield. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Students have been venting their fury at the lack of accommodation, with this government failing to take any meaningful action to support them. Following the written answer that the Minister gave to me yesterday, can he agree that the Scottish Government has a substantial additional responsibility under the Children and Young People Scotland Act 2014, the United Nations Convention, Article 27 and Article 29, to our young people who are under 18 who attend university, that they be safe? accommodated and supported and the evidence is that this is not happening indeed as we've heard universities are asking them to drop out of their courses minister well, of course we have uh, responsibilities in that regard i've laid out the work that is underway the work that we'll take forward i would uh, of course observe and unless there is a suggestion that this should alter the Scottish Government isn't directly involved in the provision of uh, housing for uh, students but of course we do recognise we have responsibilities along the lines that Mr Whitfield have uh, laid out and that will be at the heart of the strategy we take forward. And Beatrice Wishart. Thanks, President Officer. It's been well reported as other members have highlighted the serious lack of accommodation for students. Um, island students have also been experiencing major problems, just like their peers on the mainland. And I was actually aghast to hear that, uh, the short-sighted suggestion that students should suspend or defer their studies. Will the government's student accommodation strategy include plans to guarantee students from Scotland's islands accommodation at their chosen place of study? And will it recognise that accommodation is required at UHI Shetland for those studying there too? Minister. Well, I go back to the point and understand the concerns that uh, Ms Wisher is laying out, that there is no, uh, thus far, uh, direct role for the Scottish Government in terms of the provision of uh, accommodation. But I take uh, the points that she makes, I take them uh, seriously, and of course, as we take forward uh, the strategy, of course, we can consider that as a particular uh, matter for further reflection on. Uh, and Willie Rennie. 
the Minister is only too happy to take the credit for when things go right, but is absent uh, when things go wrong. St Andrews, there has been quite a dramatic impact as well. And the Minister knew this was coming. Yeah. We knew there was going to be an uptick in student numbers as a result of COVID. And we knew there were consequences from the housing legislation, yeah. whether we supported it or not. But the Minister sat idly by and did nothing. What practical plan is going to make a change now, but also for next year? Because this isn't going away any time soon. Minister. Yeah, well, um, Mr Rennie quite frequently is happy to deride me when I'm apparently trying to take credit for the successes of this administration, but uh, I won't uh, linger on that uh, too much uh, longer. As I've laid out, we have uh, plans to take forward uh, the strategy. We've already uh, taken o o on board the purpose-built student accommodation uh, research report. That will be considered further. We'll consider these issues as part of the uh, strategy we take forward. I understand uh, the uh, stresses that are in the housing market right now. Uh, there's a degree to which uh, we are seeking to work through that within our wider housing policy in terms of uh, tackling short-term lets, uh, for example, to make sure there is increased supply in the private sector. But fundamentally, through the uh, strategies that we'll take forward, we'll look to tackle these issues and we'll look to improve in the current situation. Question five is not lodged. Question six is withdrawn. Uh, question number seven, Liz Smith. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it is having with local authorities regarding child protection policies in schools. Minister Clare Hoy. All children in Scotland should grow up feeling safe, loved and respected. The Scottish Government is committed to ensuring that robust child protection measures are in place across Scotland. Last year, we published updated national child protection guidance. The Scottish Government engages regularly with local authorities on the implementation of consistent good practice on this critical issue. And the National Guidance Implementation Group was set up last September to lead on that activity. Education Scotland and the Association of Directors of Education in Scotland are both represented on the group. Ms Smith. Uh, could I thank the Minister for that response? I am sure the Minister is aware of the article that was in the Perthshire edition of The Courier on the 5th of September, in which it reported that there had been a very high absence rate uh, of Child Protection Committee members, and that encompasses both Perth and Kinross Council and NHS Tayside staff. There was a total of 148 apologies over the course of two years, with three members of that committee um, missing on 12, 11 and 9 times respectively. So can I ask the Scottish Government what action it's going to take to impress upon both local authorities and health boards the importance of people turning up to these meetings, particularly at a time where we have so many vulnerable children who are desperate for our assistance. Minister. Well, uh, I thank Liz Smith for her follow-up question, and I think she raises a very important point. Child protection, child safeguarding is everyone's business, whether that is in education or in health. And I'll certainly have my officials look into that and come back to our writing. Supplementary, Jackie Dunbar. Thank you, President Officer. How can the Scottish Government be assured the new National Child Protection Guidance is being implemented in schools? And can the Minister comment on how the Scottish Government is ensuring oversight of private music or dance lessons, both in schools and other settings? Minister. So, um, local authority schools, grant-aided special schools and independent schools were instructed to review and update their procedures in line with the 2021 National Guidance. And the National Child Protection Guidance Implementation Group was established to support that implementation. A monitoring and evaluation subgroup is developing an approach to monitoring the extent and the quality of guidance implementation. And this multi-agency subgroup includes education. Um, with regards to the point about um, private um, music or, or dance lessons within schools, the 2021 National Guidance describes the responsibilities and expectations of everyone who works with children, young people and their families in Scotland. And it makes clear that those responsible for the organisation of activities, regulated or otherwise, must ensure that safeguarding is integral to recruitment, training and oversight of staff and volunteers, and that children know how and with whom they can voice questions and concern. And question number eight, Jeremy Balfour. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it's taken to support pupils with a declared or assessed disability at school. Cabinet Secretary. 
We are committed to ensuring that all children and young people get the additional support needed to reach their full learning potential, including those with disabilities. We published our joint response to the independently chaired review of the implementation of additional support for learning in October 2020. The action plan sets out the measures we will take to implement the recommendations. We will publish an updated action plan in autumn 2022. Further, under the Equality Act 2010, responsible bodies, including local authorities, have a duty to make reasonable adjustments for disabled pupils and provide auxiliary aids and services. Jeremy Balfour. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer? But the stats show there has been no noticeable improvement in the attainment gap between declared and assessed disabled children and non-declared and assessed children, particularly at National 5 and higher level in the past five years. Therefore, the policy is simply not working. Will the Scottish Government's approach change to allow disabled people to do better in school, and when will this be implemented? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, can I thank Jeremy Balfour for, for raising this important issue? I, I do think that the updated um, action plan that I spoke about in my original answer uh, does contain uh, the measures that are required to ensure that our education system is working effectively for all children and young people. I would, of course, be happy uh, to have further discussions uh, with Mr Balfour uh, following today, should he wish uh, to raise particular issues that he does not think were in the previous action plan or that should be in the update action plan. We would be happy to receive correspondence from him on that issue, should he wish to write to me further. And we end where we started. Supplementary, Annabel Ewing. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, support for, uh, for pupils with a disability in schools is certainly an issue that has been raised by my Curtin Beath constituents over, over the years. And it seems to me that actually much anguish could be avoided if there were more early and direct engagement on the part of the school with the people and their family. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, therefore, what she could do to help to ensure that this indeed happens in schools in my Cowden Beath constituency and indeed across Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I certainly um, agree uh, with um, the uh, context that Annabel Ewan has described there. It is incredibly important um, that uh, not only schools, uh, but everybody involved in the life of a child and a young person has very close uh, discussions uh, with that young person directly and also with the family at the earliest opportunity and importantly continues to provide the support to that family um, even before diagnosis um, is given. It, it can be a very difficult time um, for families. It does not need to necessarily be as difficult as it is for many families and I'm sure Ms Ewing has had those types of constituents uh, um, issues in her mailbag and I can certainly uh, think there is a role for education in this uh, but also a role for wider government and uh, um, local agencies uh, to play a part in that too. Thank you very much. That concludes portfolio questions. There will be a brief pause uh, before we move to the next item of business.